first off, uh, break it down for us. I mean, what did we just find out from all, all of these uh, experts from the Department of Health Services and the DNR? So we got a little more clarity on the DNR and, and really what they're expecting from Wallico. So they did require Wallico to um, provide them a model for air deposition and a plan moving forward for further investigation. So um, they feel tonight that they're going to get a scope of work to do some air modeling first and try to determine where the particles that were being burned back in the 70s and 80s, where they were deposited, and then try to figure out exactly where the points would be, the kind of the hot spots, I guess, you know, most likely to see contamination. From that point, they would probably make a determination on where the testing should be done. So, so we are going to see additional testing in this area, is that correct? Yeah, I, I would say that we are. I don't think the DNR would have issued that uh, request if, if they didn't anticipate that testing would be required. So, how, I mean, what, how good should the, should the residents feel? I mean, obviously this has been a flashpoint for them for better part of a year now. Should the residents feel good that we are going to be moving forward with this? I, I think so, yeah. And I think they should also feel good that the lead, you know, the agency that actually should be doing this, they're the, taking the lead. So the regulatory, the the agency that can actually require private entities uh, to do this type of work. And so they are requiring them to do this. They are taking the lead. They do have the experts in-house um, to not only issue this and take a look at really what needs to be done, but also review what comes back properly. Right. So then no uh, action yet though, right? So there's no action really being taken yet on like what the next step is, do you know? I, no, they're just waiting on uh, Waleco to provide them the scope of services that they're proposing. They will have some back and forth tonight. They said that they will have to get some other entities involved for a review of that. So they're thinking it sounds like 60 days, maybe even up to 90 days before they actually come to a conclusion on an actual scope of work. So then, is this going to have any impact at all on the reconstruction of Thomas Streets, or is this going to be mostly centered around the park? This tonight is really just centered around the park and what they're talking about. Um, the Parks and Rec Committee is concerned about the park. Uh, that's why also that the city decided to pursue a phase one uh, environmental survey versus just randomly kind of taking a look at different parts of the park. Uh, this gives us a full view of the park and all the surrounding properties and the history and, and what has happened around that property over the last hundred years. So then when you're talking about Waleco, how involved are they going to be? Because I kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like they may be the ones responsible for everything as far as paying for the testing and then remediating and cleaning it up? That's correct, yeah. At this point, they're going to pay for the scope of services preparing that. They're going to pay for any air modeling that they're going to do. Um, the DNR is requiring them to foot the bill for all of this. Anything else that we should know about uh, about this then? I don't think so, not right now, so <laughs> stay tuned, I guess. It's, it's, a lot to, it's a lot to digest right now. A it? Absolutely. I think that the one thing, you know, with the public, unfortunately, this isn't something that turns over in a couple months. I mean... We're going to have multiple steps through the process, so uh, we just hope everybody's patient and the information will eventually come out. Right, but again, this has got nothing to do with the Thomas Street reconstruction. This is all centered on Riverside Park. That's right? correct. Uh, yes. Is there going to be any plan then for the near future to maybe just kind of put up some signs then, especially by that culvert, just say, hey, stay out of here? Or, uh... I don't think so. Um, just because what the toxicologist had said, you know, it's really unaccessible and there really isn't a health threat there. Um, and so we're, we're not going to do anything special back there. We're not going to do any clearing or anything at this point, um, you know, and the DNR doesn't feel like that we need to do anything either. So just let the sleeping dog lie right now, so to speak? Correct. And we will see what uh, kind of comes about uh, with the further testing if they do want to do some testing downstream of that culvert along the hillside along you know so i think that there's going to be a lot more information for the experts to make decisions on coming up yeah i need to ask you about flooding flooding okay <laughs> all right uh, so I, I saw your press release and obviously you guys are still yeah. working to clean up some of the snow and stuff are there areas that are most concerning or that you think are at the most risk i guess uh, you know, we do have some areas that, that we have problems at every year uh, with heavy rains and with snow and ice. Um, 
mainly they're in the flat areas uh, within the city, like the southeast side and, you know, where things just don't drain real well. And now with the catch basins either covered with packed snow or ice, they're not draining, so things will pond in the street. Um, the issue is it'll be citywide. And so I wanted people to understand that, you know, we're aware of the situation and we're kind of changing over from our snow removal process to um, trying to move into spring. Um, but we will have some challenges over the next 10 to 14 days uh, trying to get to the city, trying to get these catch basins opened. And if people, um, they will have flooding, especially with the rain coming, which is another concern of mine. Um, and that with the freezing temperatures at night, that water will melt during the day, freeze at night, you know, it will become slippery. And, oops. Don't worry, it's okay. And I, I just, I, um, I wanted everybody to know that we're working on it. Um, we just hope we can do it faster than in two weeks. So. Is the process mostly just clearing those basins, or is there anything else that you guys are also? Uh, yeah, we typically bring graders out. We will have to do some snow removal on some of the corners where the snow is still encroaching into the street. Um, and then we'll have to do some chipping, uh, those types of things. If the storm sewer is frozen, then we'll have to get the steamers out and steam them open uh, to make sure everything does drain. So it, um, in some areas, it can definitely be uh, time consuming. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the, the one thing, did you shut that off? No, yeah. not yet. Go for it. Okay, so <laughs> the sand barrels. We, yes. We've had a lot of phone calls, and we're not filling the sand barrels um, this spring. So I just wanted everybody to know that. But we do have sand available down at streets at 400 Myron Street. Okay. And so if people want to bring a bucket down or something like that, they can still get sand from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. on the weekdays. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Awesome.